The Principia Mathematica often abbreviated PM is a three-volume work on the foundations of mathematics written by Alfred North Whitehead and Bertrand Russell and published in 1910, 1912, and 1913. In 1925–27, it appeared in a second edition with an important introduction to the second edition, an Appendix A that replaced 9 and all new Appendix B and Appendix C. PM was an attempt to describe a set of axioms and inference rules in symbolic logic from which all mathematical truths could in principle be proven. As such, this ambitious project is of great importance in the history of mathematics and philosophy, being one of the foremost products of the belief that such an undertaking may be achievable. However, in 1931, Gödel's incompleteness theorem proved definitively that PM, and in fact any other attempt, could never achieve this lofty goal, that is, for any set of axioms and inference rules proposed to encapsulate mathematics, either the system must be inconsistent, or there must in fact be some truths of mathematics which could not be deduced from them. One of the main inspirations and motivations for PM was the earlier work of Gottlob Frege on logic, which Russell discovered allowed for the construction of paradoxical sets. PM sought to avoid this problem by ruling out the unrestricted creation of arbitrary sets. This was achieved by replacing the notion of a general set with the notion of a hierarchy of sets of different types, a set of a certain type only allowed to contain sets of strictly lower types. Contemporary mathematics, however, avoids paradoxes such as Russell's in less unwieldy ways, such as the system of zermelo frankel set theory. PM is not to be confused with Russell's 1903 The Principles of Mathematics. PM states, "...the present work was originally intended by us to be comprised in a second volume of Principles of Mathematics. But as we advanced, it became increasingly evident that the subject is a very much larger one than we had supposed, moreover on many fundamental questions which had been left obscure and doubtful in the former work, we have now arrived at what we believe to be satisfactory solutions." PM has long been known for its typographical complexity. Famously, several hundred pages of PM precede the proof of the validity of the proposition 1 plus 1 equals 2. The modern library placed it 23rd in a list of the top 100 English language non-fiction books of the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> Scope of foundations laid The Principia covered only set theory, cardinal numbers, ordinal numbers, and real numbers. Deeper theorems from real analysis were not included, but by the end of the third volume it was clear to experts that a large amount of known mathematics could in principle be developed in the adopted formalism. It was also clear how lengthy such a development would be. A fourth volume on the foundations of geometry had been planned, but the authors admitted to intellectual exhaustion upon completion of the third. Theoretical basis As noted in the criticism of the theory by Kurt Gödel below, unlike a formalist theory, the logicistic Theory of PM has no precise statement of the syntax of the formalism. Another observation is that almost immediately in the theory, interpretations in the sense of model theory are presented in terms of truth values for the behavior of the symbols. Assertion of truth, tilde, logical not, and v, logical inclusive or. Truth values, PM embeds the notions of truth and falsity in the notion primitive proposition a raw pure formalist theory would not provide the meaning of the symbols that form a primitive proposition the symbols themselves could be absolutely arbitrary and unfamiliar the theory would specify only how the symbols behave based on the grammar of the theory 
Then later, by assignment of values, a model would specify an interpretation of what the formulas are saying. Thus in the formal clean symbol set below, the interpretation of what the symbols commonly mean, and by implication how they end up being used, is given in parentheses, e.g., not. But this is not a pure formalist theory. Topic contemporary construction of a formal theory The following formalist theory is offered as contrast to the logicistic theory of P.M. A contemporary formal system would be constructed as follows, symbols used, this set is the starting set, and other symbols can appear but only by definition from these beginning symbols. A starting set might be the following set derived from clean 1952, logical symbols, implies, if then, and, 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 v, or, not, for all, there exists, predicate symbol equals, equals, function symbols, plus, arithmetic addition, arithmetic multiplication, successor, individual symbol, zero, zero, variables, a, b, c, etc., and parentheses, and, Symbol strings, the theory will build strings of these symbols by concatenation juxtaposition. Formation rules, the theory specifies the rules of syntax rules of grammar usually as a recursive definition that starts with zero and specifies how to build acceptable strings or well-formed formulas WFFS. This includes a rule for substitution of strings for the symbols called variables as opposed to the other symbol types. Transformation rules, the axioms that specify the behaviors of the symbols and symbol sequences. Rule of inference, detachment, modus ponens, the rule that allows the theory to detach a conclusion from the premises that led up to it, and thereafter to discard the premises symbols to the left of the line, or symbols above the line if horizontal. If this were not the case, then substitution would result in longer and longer strings that have to be carried forward. Indeed, after the application of modus ponens, nothing is left but the conclusion, the rest disappears forever. Contemporary theories often specify as their first axiom the classical or modus ponens or the rule of detachment. A, A, B, B. The symbol is usually written as a horizontal line, here means implies. The symbols A and B are stand-ins for strings. This form of notation is called an axiom schema, i.e. There is a countable number of specific forms the notation could take. This can be read in a manner similar to if-then but with a difference, given symbol string if A and A implies B then B and retain only B for further use. But the symbols have no interpretation, e.g., no truth table, or truth values, or truth functions and modus ponens proceeds mechanistically, by grammar alone. Construction The theory of PM has both significant similarities, and similar differences, to a contemporary formal theory. Kleene states that, "...this deduction of mathematics from logic was offered as intuitive axiomatics." The axioms were intended to be believed, or at least to be accepted as plausible hypotheses concerning the world. Indeed, unlike a formalist theory that manipulates symbols according to rules of grammar, PM introduces the notion of truth values, i.e., truth and falsity in the real world sense, and the assertion of truth almost immediately as the fifth and sixth elements in the structure of the theory pm 1962-4-36 variables uses of various letters the fundamental functions of propositions the contradictory function symbolized by tilde and the logical sum or disjunctive function symbolized by being taken as primitive and logical implication defined the following example also used to illustrate 9. Definition below asp q equals tilde p q d f p m 1962 to 11 
and logical product defined as P Q equals tilde tilde P tilde Q DF PM one thousand nine hundred sixty two to twelve equivalence logical equivalence not arithmetic equivalence given as a demonstration of how the symbols are used i.e. thus PQ stands for PQ QP PM one thousand nine hundred sixty two to seven Notice that to discuss the notation PM identifies a meta notation with space. Space logical equivalence appears again as a definition. PQ equals PQ QP PM one thousand nine hundred sixty two to twelve. Notice the appearance of parentheses. This grammatical usage is not specified and appears sporadically. Parentheses do play an important role in symbol strings, however, e.g., the notation x for the contemporary x truth values. The truth value of a proposition is truth if it is true, and falsehood if it is false. This phrase is due to Frege PM 1962-7. Assertion sign. P may be read, it is true that. Thus, P, Q, means, it is true that P implies Q, whereas, P, Q, means, P is true, therefore Q is true. The first of these does not necessarily involve the truth either of P or of Q, while the second involves the truth of both. PM 1962-92. Inference, PM S version of modus ponens. If P and P Q have occurred, then Q will occur if it is desired to put it on record. The process of the inference cannot be reduced to symbols. Its sole record is the occurrence of Q. In other words, the symbols on the left disappear or can be erased. PM 1962-9 The use of dots Definitions, these use the equals sign with df at the right end. Summary of preceding statements, brief discussion of the primitive ideas, tilde p and pq and prefixed to a proposition. Primitive propositions, the axioms or postulates. This was significantly modified in the second edition. Propositional functions, the notion of proposition was significantly modified in the second edition, including the introduction of atomic propositions linked by logical signs to form molecular propositions, and the use of substitution of molecular propositions into atomic or molecular propositions to create new expressions. The range of values and total variation Ambiguous assertion and the real variable, this and the next two sections were modified or abandoned in the second edition. In particular, the distinction between the concepts defined in sections 15. Definition and the real variable and 16 propositions connecting real and apparent variables was abandoned in the second edition. Formal implication and formal equivalence Identity Classes and relations Various descriptive functions of relations Plural descriptive functions Unit classes Topic. Primitive ideas CF. PM 1962-90-94, for the first edition 1. Elementary propositions 2. Elementary propositions of functions 3. Assertion, introduces the notions of truth and falsity 4. Assertion of a propositional function 5. Negation. If P is any proposition, the proposition, not P, or P is false, will be represented by tilde P. Quote, quote. 
6 disjunction if p and q are any propositions the proposition p or q i e either p is true or q is true where the alternatives are to be not mutually exclusive will be represented by pq cf section b topic primitive propositions the first edition see discussion relative to the second edition below begins with a definition of the sign 1.01 pq equals tilde pq df 1.1 anything implied by a true elementary proposition is true pp modus ponens 1.11 was abandoned in the second edition 1.2 pp p pp principle of tautology 1.3 q pq pp principle of addition 1.4 pq qp pp principle of permutation 1.5 pqr qpr pp associative principle 1.6 qr pq pr pp principle of summation 1.7 if p is an elementary proposition, tilde p is an elementary proposition. pp 1.71. If p and q are elementary propositions, pq is an elementary proposition. pp 1.72. If phi p and psi p are elementary propositional functions which take elementary propositions as arguments, phi p psi p is an elementary proposition pp together with the introduction to the second edition the second edition's appendix a abandons the entire section 9 this includes six primitive propositions 9 through 9.15 together with the axioms of reducibility the revised theory is made difficult by the introduction of the scheffer stroke quote pipe quote to symbolize incompatibility i.e., if both elementary propositions p and q are true, their stroke p, q is false, the contemporary logical NAND not an. In the revised theory, the introduction presents the notion of atomic proposition, a datum, that belongs to the philosophical part of logic. These have no parts that are propositions and do not contain the notions all or some. For example, this is red, or this is earlier than that. Such things can exist ad finitum, i.e., even an infinite enumeration of them to replace generality, i.e., the notion of for all. PM then advance s to molecular propositions that are all linked by the stroke. Definitions give equivalences for tilde and quote dot quote. The new introduction defines elementary propositions as atomic and molecular positions together. It then replaces all the primitive propositions 1.2 to 1.72 with a single primitive proposition framed in terms of the stroke. If p, q, r are elementary propositions, given p and p, q, r, we can infer r. This is a primitive proposition. The new introduction keeps the notation for there exists, now recast as sometimes true, and for all, recast as always true. Appendix A strengthens the notion of matrix or predicative function a primitive idea pm 1962 to 164 and presents four new primitive propositions as 8.1 8.13 88 multiplicative axiom 120 axiom of infinity topic 
ramified types and the axiom of reducibility In simple type theory objects are elements of various disjoint types types are implicitly built up as follows if tau 1 tau m are types then there is a type tau 1 Tau m that can be thought of as the class of propositional functions of tau 1 tau m which in set theory is essentially the set of subsets of tau 1 times times tau m in particular there is a type of propositions and there may be a type iota iota of individuals from which other types are built Russell and Whitehead's notation for building up types from other types is rather cumbersome, and the notation here is due to Church. In the ramified type theory of PM all objects are elements of various disjoint ramified types. Ramified types are implicitly built up as follows. If tau 1 tau m, sigma 1 Sigma n are ramified types then as in simple type theory there is a type tau 1 tau m sigma 1 sigma n of predicative propositional functions of tau 1 tau m sigma 1 sigma n however there are also ramified types tau 1 Tau m, sigma 1, sigma n that can be thought of as the classes of propositional functions of tau 1. Tau m obtained from propositional functions of type tau 1. Tau m, sigma 1, sigma n by quantifying over sigma 1, sigma n. When n equals zero, so there are no sigma s. These propositional functions are called predicative functions or matrices. This can be confusing because current mathematical practice does not distinguish between predicative and non-predicative functions, and in any case, PM never defines exactly what a predicative function actually is. This is taken as a primitive notion. Russell and Whitehead found it impossible to develop mathematics while maintaining the difference between predicative and non-predicative functions, so they introduced the axiom of reducibility, saying that for every non-predicative function there is a predicative function taking the same values. In practice this axiom essentially means that the elements of type tau1 tau m, sigma1 Sigma n can be identified with the elements of type tau 1 tau m, which causes the hierarchy of ramified types to collapse down to simple type theory. Strictly speaking this is not quite correct, because PM allows two propositional functions to be different even if they take the same values on all arguments. This differs from current mathematical practice where one normally identifies two such functions, in Zermelo set theory one can model the ramified type theory of PM as follows. One picks a set iota to be the type of individuals. For example, iota might be the set of natural numbers, or the set of atoms in a set theory with atoms or any other set one is interested in. Then if tau 1 tau m are types, the type tau 1 Tau m is the power set of the product tau 1 times times tau m, which can also be thought of informally as the set of propositional predicative functions from this product to a two-element set true, false. The ramified type tau 1 tau m, sigma 1 sigma n can be modeled as the product of the type tau 1 Tau m, sigma 1, sigma n, with the set of sequences of n quantifiers, or indicating which quantifier should be applied to each variable sigma i. One can vary this slightly by allowing the sigma s to be quantified in any order, or allowing them to occur before some of the tau s, but this makes little difference except to the bookkeeping.
Topic Notation. One author observes that the notation in that work has been superseded by the subsequent development of logic during the 20th century, to the extent that the beginner has trouble reading PM at all. While much of the symbolic content can be converted to modern notation, the original notation itself is a subject of scholarly dispute and some notation embod y substantive logical doctrine so that it cannot simply be replaced by contemporary symbolism Kurt Gödel was harshly critical of the notation it is to be regretted that this first comprehensive and thorough going presentation of a mathematical logic and the derivation of mathematics from it is so greatly lacking in formal precision in the foundations contained in 121 of Principia i.e. sections 1-5 propositional logic 8 to 14 predicate logic with identity equality 20 introduction to set theory and 21 Introduction to Relations Theory that it represents in this respect a considerable step backwards as compared with Frege. What is missing, above all, is a precise statement of the syntax of the formalism. Syntactical considerations are omitted even in cases where they are necessary for the cogency of the proofs. This is reflected in the example below of the symbols. P q r and that can be formed into the string p q r pm requires a definition of what this symbol string means in terms of other symbols in contemporary treatments the formation rules syntactical rules leading to well formed formulas would have prevented the formation of this string source of the notation chapter 1 Preliminary explanations of ideas and notations begins with the source of the elementary parts of the notation, the symbols equals minus lambda v epsilon and the system of dots. The notation adopted in the present work is based upon that of Pino, and the following explanations are to some extent modeled on those which he prefixes to his Formulario Mathematico, i.e., Pino 1889. His use of dots as brackets is adopted, and so are many of his symbols. PM 1927-4, PM changed Pino's, too, and also adopted a few of Pino's later symbols, such as an iota, and Pino's practice of turning letters upside down. PM adopts the assertion sign. From Frege's 1879 Begriffschrift. I t may be read it is true that thus to assert a proposition ppm writes p pm 1927 to 92 observe that as in the original the left dot is square and of greater size than the period on the right most of the rest of the notation in pm was invented by whitehead Topic an introduction to the notation of section A mathematical logic formulas 15.71 pm s dots are used in a manner similar to parentheses each dot or multiple dot represents either a left or right parenthesis or the logical symbol more than one dot indicates the depth of the parentheses for example or However the position of the matching right or left parenthesis is not indicated explicitly in the notation but has to be deduced from some rules that are complicated, confusing and sometimes ambiguous. Moreover, when the dots stand for a logical symbol its left and right operands have to be deduced using similar rules. First one has to decide based on context whether the dots stand for a left or right parenthesis or a logical symbol. Then one has to decide how far the other corresponding parenthesis is, here one carries on until one meets either a larger number of dots, or the same number of dots next that have equal or greater force, or the end of the line. Dots next to the signs, equals df have greater force than dots next to x, x and so on, which have greater force than dots indicating a logical product. 
Example 1. The line 3.12, tilde P, V, tilde Q, V, P, Q corresponds to tilde P, V, tilde Q, V, P, Q, where the colon represents the outer, the next two dots represent the parentheses around tilde P and tilde Q, the third dot represents the parentheses around P, Q, and the fourth dot rather confusingly represents the logical symbol rather than a pair of parentheses. This uses the definition followed by the explanatory comment 2.33 pvqvr equals pvqvrdf this definition serves only for the avoidance of brackets example 2 with double triple and quadruple dots 9.521 x phi x q x phi x v r q v r stands for x phi x q x phi x v r q v r example 3 with a double dot indicating a logical symbol from volume 1 page 10 pq qr pr stands for pq qr pr where the double dot represents the logical symbol and can be viewed as having the same priority as a non-logical single dot later in section 14 brackets appear and in sections 20 and following braces appear whether these symbols have specific meanings or are just for visual clarification is unclear Unfortunately the single dot but also etc is also used to symbolize logical product contemporary logical and often symbolized by and or logical implication is represented by pinos simplified to logical negation is symbolized by an elongated tilde ie tilde contemporary tilde or the logical or by v the symbol equals together with df is used to indicate is defined as whereas in sections 13 and following equals is defined as mathematically identical with ie contemporary mathematical equality cf discussion in section 13 logical equivalence is represented by contemporary if and only if elementary propositional functions are written in the customary way e.g. f p but later the function sign appears directly before the variable without parenthesis e.g. phi x chi x etc example pm introduces the definition of logical product as follows 3.01 p Q equals tilde tilde P V tilde Q D F where P Q is the logical product of P and Q. 3.02 P Q R equals P Q Q R D F. This definition serves merely to abbreviate proofs, translation of the formulas into contemporary symbols. Various authors use alternate symbols, so no definitive translation can be given. However, because of criticisms such as that of Kurt Gödel below, the best contemporary treatments will be very precise with respect to the formation rules, the syntax of the formulas. The first formula might be converted into modern symbolism as follows: p and q equals df tilde tilde p v tilde q alternately p and q equals df p v q alternately p q equals df p v q etc. The second formula might be converted as follows: PQR equals DF PQ and QR, but note that this is not logically equivalent to PQR nor to PQR, and these two are not logically equivalent either. Topic: An introduction to the notation of section B theory of apparent variables. Formulas 8 14.34 These sections concern what is now known as predicate logic, and predicate logic with identity equality. NB, as a result of criticism and advances, the second edition of PM 1927 replaces 9 with a new 8 Appendix A. This new section eliminates the first edition's distinction between real and apparent variables, and it eliminates the primitive idea assertion of a propositional function. To add to the complexity of the treatment, 8 introduces the notion of substituting a 
Matrix, and the Scheffer stroke, matrix, in contemporary usage, PMS matrix is, at least for propositional functions, a truth table, i.e., all truth values of a propositional or predicate function. Scheffer stroke, is the contemporary logical NAND, not an, i.e., incompatibility, meaning, given two propositions P and Q, then P, Q means Proposition P is incompatible with Proposition Q, i.e., if both propositions P and Q evaluate as true, then and only then P, Q evaluates as false. After Section 8 the Scheffer stroke sees no usage, Section 10, the existential and universal operators, PM adds X to represent the contemporary symbolism for all X, i.e., X, and it uses a backwards serif E to represent, there exists an X, i.e., X, i.e., the contemporary, X. The typical notation would be similar to the following. X, phi X, means, for all values of variable X, function phi evaluates to true. X, phi X, means, for some value of variable x, function phi evaluates to true. Sections 10, 11, 12, properties of a variable extended to all individuals. Section 10 introduces the notion of a property of a variable. PM gives the example: phi is a function that indicates is a Greek, and psi indicates is a man, and chi indicates is a mortal. These functions then apply to a variable x. PM can now write, and evaluate x, psi x the notation above means, for all x, x is a man. Given a collection of individuals, one can evaluate the above formula for truth or falsity. For example, given the restricted collection of individuals Socrates, Plato, Russell, Zeus, the above evaluates to true if we allow for Zeus to be a man. But it fails for x, phi x because Russell is not Greek. And it fails for x, chi x because Zeus is not a mortal. Equipped with this notation PM can create formulas to express the following. If all Greeks are men and if all men are mortals then all Greeks are mortals. PM 1962-138 X, phi x psi x sad face, x, psi x chi x, x, phi x chi Another example, the formula 10.01, x, phi x, equals, tilde x, tilde phi x df means the symbols representing the assertion there exists at least one x that satisfies function phi is defined by the symbols representing the assertion it's not true that, given all values of x, there are no values of x satisfying phi. The symbolisms x and x appear at 10.02 and 10.03. Both are abbreviations for universality i.e., for all that bind the variable x to the logical operator. Contemporary notation would have simply used parentheses outside of the equality. Equals. Sign. 10.02 phi x x psi x, equals, x, phi x psi x df. Contemporary notation, x, phi, x, psi, x, or a variant, 10.03 phi x x psi x, equals, x, phi x psi x df Contemporary notation, x, phi x, left right arrow psi x, or a variant, pm attributes the first symbolism to pino. Section 11 applies this symbolism to two variables. Thus the following notations, x, y, x, y could all appear in a single formula. Section 12 reintroduces the notion of matrix, contemporary truth table, the notion of logical types, and in particular the notions of first order and second order functions and propositions. New symbolism. 
phi x represents any value of a first order function if a circumflex is placed over a variable then this is an individual value of y meaning that y indicates individuals e.g., a row in a truth table, this distinction is necessary because of the matrix, extensional nature of propositional functions. Now equipped with the matrix notion, PM can assert its controversial axiom of reducibility, a function of one or two variables two being sufficient for PM's use where all its values are given i.e., in its matrix is logically equivalent to some predicative function of the same variables. The one variable definition is given below as an illustration of the notation PM 1962-166-167 12.1. F, phi x, x, f, x pp. pp is a primitive proposition. Propositions assumed without proof. PM 1962-12, i.e., contemporary axioms, adding to the seven defined in section 1, starting with 1.1 modus ponens. These are to be distinguished from the primitive ideas that include the assertion sign. Negation. Tilde. Logical OR. V. The notions of elementary proposition. And elementary propositional function. These are as close as PM comes to rules of notational formation, i.e., syntax, this means, we assert the truth of the following, there exists a function f with the property that, given all values of x, their evaluations in function phi i.e., resulting their matrix is logically equivalent to some f evaluated at those same values of x, and vice versa, hence logical equivalence. In other words, given a matrix determined by property phi applied to variable x, there exists a function f that, when applied to the x is logically equivalent to the matrix. Or, every matrix phi x can be represented by a function f applied to x, and vice versa. 13. The identity operator. Equals. This is a definition that uses the sign in two different ways, as noted by the quote from PM. 13.01, x equals y, equals, phi, phi, x, phi, y df means. This definition states that x and y are to be called identical when every predicative function satisfied by x is also satisfied by y. Note that the second sign of equality in the above definition is combined with df and thus is not really the same symbol as the sign of equality which is defined. The not equals sign, does not equal, makes its appearance as a definition at 13.02. 14. Descriptions. A description is a phrase of the form. The term y which satisfies phi, where phi is some function satisfied by one and only one argument. From this PM employs two new symbols, a forward e and an inverted iota. Here is an example. 14.02, e, y, phi y, equals, b, phi y, y, y equals b d f. This has the meaning. The y satisfying phi exists. Which holds when, and only when phi is satisfied by one value of y and by no other value. PM 1967-173-174 Topic: <inaudible> Introduction to the notation of the theory of classes and relations The text leaps from section 14 directly to the foundational sections 20 general theory of classes and 21 general theory of relations. Relations are what is known in contemporary set theory as sets of ordered pairs. Sections 20 and 22 introduce many of the symbols still in contemporary usage. 
These include the symbols epsilon quote dash quote lambda and v epsilon signifies is an element of pm 1962 to 188 22.01 signifies is contained in is a subset of 22.02 .02 signifies the intersection logical product of classes sets 22.03 signifies the union logical sum of classes sets quote dash quote 22.03 signifies negation of a class set lambda signifies the null class and v signifies the universal class or universe of discourse small greek letters other than epsilon iota pi phi psi chi and theta represent classes e.g. alpha beta gamma delta etc pm 1962 to 188 x epsilon alpha the use of single letter in place of symbols such as z, phi z or z, phi z is practically almost indispensable, since otherwise the notation rapidly becomes intolerably cumbrous. Thus, x epsilon alpha will mean x is a member of the class alpha. PM 1962 to 188 alpha alpha equals v. The union of a set and its inverse is the universal completed set. Alpha alpha equals lambda. The intersection of a set and its inverse is the null empty set. When applied to relations in section 23 calculus of relations, the symbols and quote dash quote acquire a dot. For example, the notion and notation of a class. Set, in the first edition PM asserts that no new primitive ideas are necessary to define what is meant by a class, and only two new primitive propositions, called the axioms of reducibility for classes and relations respectively PM 1962-25. But before this notion can be defined, PM feels it necessary to create a peculiar notation z, phi z that it calls a fictitious object. PM 1962-188 x epsilon z, phi z, phi x i.e., x is a member of the class determined by phi is logically equivalent to x satisfies phi, or to phi x is true. PM 1962-25 At least PM can tell the reader how these fictitious objects behave, because a class is wholly determinate when its membership is known, that is, there cannot be two different classes having the same membership. PM 1962-26. This is symbolized by the following equality similar to 13.01 above. Z phi z equals z psi z x phi x psi x. This last is the distinguishing characteristic of classes, and justifies us in treating z psi z as the class determined by the function psi. PM 1962-188 Perhaps the above can be made clearer by the discussion of classes in introduction to the second edition, which disposes of the axiom of reducibility and replaces it with the notion, "...all functions of functions are extensional." PM 1962, xxxix, i.e., Phi x x psi x x f phi f psi pm 1962 x x x i x. This has the reasonable meaning that 
if for all values of x the truth values of the functions phi and psi of x are logically equivalent then the function f of a given phi and f of psi are logically equivalent pm asserts this as obvious this is obvious since phi can only occur in f phi by the substitution of values of phi for p q r in a logical function, and, if phi x psi x, the substitution of phi x for p in a logical function gives the same truth value to the truth function as the substitution of psi x. Consequently there is no longer any reason to distinguish between functions classes, for we have, in virtue of the above, phi x x psi x, x phi equals psi. Observe the change to the equality equals sign on the right pm goes on to state that will continue to hang onto the notation z phi z but this is merely equivalent to phi and this is a class all quotes pm 1962 xxx x, x, equals topic consistency and criticisms Equals, According to Carnap's logicist foundations of mathematics, Russell wanted a theory that could plausibly be said to derive all of mathematics from purely logical axioms. However, Principia Mathematica required, in addition to the basic axioms of type theory, three further axioms that seem to not be true as mere matters of logic, namely the axiom of infinity, the axiom of choice, and the axiom of reducibility. Since the first two were existential axioms, Russell phrased mathematical statements depending on them as conditionals. But reducibility was required to be sure that the formal statements even properly express statements of real analysis, so that statements depending on it could not be reformulated as conditionals. Frank P. Ramsey tried to argue that Russell's ramification of the theory of types was unnecessary, so that reducibility could be removed, but these arguments seemed inconclusive. Beyond the status of the axioms as logical truths, one can ask the following questions about any system such as PM. Whether a contradiction could be derived from the axioms the question of inconsistency, and whether there exists a mathematical statement which could neither be proven nor disproven in the system the question of completeness, propositional logic itself was known to be consistent, but the same had not been established for Principia's axioms of set theory. See Hilbert's second problem. Russell and Whitehead suspected that the system in PM is incomplete, for example, they pointed out that it does not seem powerful enough to show that the cardinal omega exists. However, one can ask if some recursively axiomatizable extension of it is complete and consistent. Topic: <laughs> Gödel 1930, 1931. In 1930, Gödel's completeness theorem showed that first-order predicate logic itself was complete in a much weaker sense. That is, any sentence that is unprovable from a given set of axioms must actually be false in some model of the axioms. However, this is not the stronger sense of completeness desired for Principia Mathematica, since a given system of axioms such as those of Principia Mathematica may have many models, in some of which a given statement is true and in others of which that statement is false, so that the statement is left undecided by the axioms. Gödel's incompleteness theorems cast unexpected light on these two related questions. Gödel's first incompleteness theorem showed that no recursive extension of Principia could be both consistent and complete for arithmetic statements. As mentioned above, Principia itself was already known to be incomplete for some non arithmetic statements. According to the theorem, within every sufficiently powerful recursive logical system, such as Principia, there exists a statement G that essentially reads, The statement G cannot be proved. 
Such a statement is a sort of catch-22, if G is provable, then it is false, and the system is therefore inconsistent, and if G is not provable, then it is true, and the system is therefore incomplete. Gödel's second incompleteness theorem 1931 shows that no formal system extending basic arithmetic can be used to prove its own consistency. Thus, the statement, there are no contradictions in the Principia system, cannot be proven in the Principia system unless there are contradictions in the system in which case it can be proven both true and false. Topic. Wittgenstein 1919, 1939 By the second edition of PM, Russell had removed his axiom of reducibility to a new axiom although he does not state it as such. Gödel 1944-126 describes it this way. This change is connected with the new axiom that functions can occur in propositions only through their values, i.e., extensionally, this is quite unobjectionable even from the constructive standpoint, provided that quantifiers are always restricted to definite orders. This change from a quasi intentional stance to a fully extensional stance also restricts predicate logic to the second order, i.e., functions of functions. We can decide that mathematics is to confine itself to functions of functions which obey the above assumption. PM 2nd edition p. 401, Appendix C. This new proposal resulted in a dire outcome. An extensional stance. And restriction to a second-order predicate logic means that a propositional function extended to all individuals such as all x are blue now has to list all of the x that satisfy are true in the proposition, listing them in a possibly infinite conjunction, e.g. x1 x2, xn. Ironically, this change came about as the result of criticism from Wittgenstein in his 1919 Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus. As described by Russell in the preface to the second edition of P.M. There is another course, recommended by Wittgenstein Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus, asterisk 5.54 ff for philosophical reasons. This is to assume that functions of propositions are always truth functions, and that a function can only occur in a proposition through its values, working through the consequences it appears that everything in volume I remains true, the theory of inductive cardinals and ordinals survives, but it seems that the theory of infinite Dedekindian and well-ordered series largely collapses, so that irrationals, and real numbers generally, can no longer be adequately dealt with. Also Cantor's proof that 2n greater than n breaks down unless n is finite. PM second edition reprinted 1962, XIV, also CF new appendix C. In other words, the fact that an infinite list cannot realistically be specified means that the concept of number in the infinite sense, i.e., the continuum, cannot be described by the new theory proposed in PM second edition. Wittgenstein in his Lectures on the Foundations of Mathematics, Cambridge 1939 criticized Principia on various grounds, such as It purports to reveal the fundamental basis for arithmetic. However, it is our everyday arithmetical practices such as counting which are fundamental, for if a persistent discrepancy arose between counting and Principia, this would be treated as evidence of an error in Principia e.g., that Principia did not characterize numbers or addition correctly, not as evidence of an error in everyday counting. The calculating methods in Principia can only be used in practice with very small numbers. To calculate using large numbers e.g., billions, the formulae would become too long, and some shortcut method would have to be used, which would no doubt rely on everyday techniques such as counting or else on non-fundamental and hence questionable methods such as induction. 
So again Principia depends on everyday techniques, not vice versa. Wittgenstein did, however, concede that Principia may nonetheless make some aspects of everyday arithmetic clearer. Topic: <laughs> Gödel 1944. In his 1944 Russell's Mathematical Logic, Gödel offers a critical but sympathetic discussion of the logicistic order of ideas." It is to be regretted that this first comprehensive and thorough-going presentation of a mathematical logic and the derivation of mathematics from it is so greatly lacking in formal precision in the foundations contained in asterisk 1 asterisk 21 of Principia that it represents in this respect a considerable step backwards as compared with Frege. What is missing, above all, is a precise statement of the syntax of the formalism. Syntactical considerations are omitted even in cases where they are necessary for the cogency of the proofs. The matter is especially doubtful for the rule of substitution and of replacing defined symbols by their definions. It is chiefly the rule of substitution which would have to be proved Godel 1944-124. Topic Contents Topic Part One Mathematical Logic Volume One One to Forty Three This section describes the propositional and predicate calculus, and gives the basic properties of classes, relations, and types. Topic Part Two Prolegomena to Cardinal Arithmetic, Volume One Fifty to Ninety Seven. This part covers various properties of relations, especially those needed for cardinal arithmetic. Topic Part Three Cardinal Arithmetic, Volume Two One Hundred to One Hundred Twenty Six. This covers the definition and basic properties of cardinals. A cardinal is defined to be an equivalence class of similar classes as opposed to ZFC, where a cardinal is a special sort of von Neumann ordinal. Each type has its own collection of cardinals associated with it, and there is a considerable amount of bookkeeping necessary for comparing cardinals of different types. PM define addition, multiplication and exponentiation of cardinals, and compare different definitions of finite and infinite cardinals. 120.03 is the axiom of infinity. <laughs> Part 4 Relation Arithmetic. Volume 2 150-186. A relation number is an equivalence class of isomorphic relations. PM defines analogs of addition, multiplication, and exponentiation for arbitrary relations. The addition and multiplication is similar to the usual definition of addition and multiplication of ordinals in ZFC, though the definition of exponentiation of relations in PM is not equivalent to the usual one used in ZFC. Topic Part Five Series, Volume Two, Two Hundred to Two Hundred Thirty Four, and Volume Three, Two Hundred Fifty to Two Hundred Seventy Six. This covers series, which is PM's term for what is now called a totally ordered set. In particular it covers complete series, continuous functions between series with the order topology though of course they do not use this terminology, well-ordered series, and series without gaps, those with a member strictly between any two given members. Topic. Part 6 Quantity. Volume 3 300-375. 
This section constructs the ring of integers, the fields of rational and real numbers, and vector families, which are related to what are now called torsors over abelian groups. Topic: <laughs> Comparison with set theory. This section compares the system in PM with the usual mathematical foundations of ZFC. The system of PM is roughly comparable in strength with Zermelo set theory or more precisely a version of it where the axiom of separation has all quantifiers bounded. The system of propositional logic and predicate calculus in PM is essentially the same as that used now, except that the notation and terminology has changed. The most obvious difference between PM and set theory is that in PM all objects belong to one of a number of disjoint types. This means that everything gets duplicated for each infinite type, for example, each type has its own ordinals, cardinals, real numbers, and so on. This results in a lot of bookkeeping to relate the various types with each other. In ZFC functions are normally coded as sets of ordered pairs. In PM functions are treated rather differently. First of all, function means propositional function, something taking values true or false. Second, functions are not determined by their values. It is possible to have several different functions all taking the same values. For example, one might regard 2x plus 2 and 2x plus 1 as different functions on grounds that the computer programs for evaluating them are different. The functions in ZFC given by sets of ordered pairs correspond to what PM call matrices. And the more general functions in PM are coded by quantifying over some variables. In particular PM distinguishes between functions defined using quantification and functions not defined using quantification, whereas ZFC does not make this distinction. PM has no analog of the axiom of replacement, though this is of little practical importance as this axiom is used very little in mathematics outside set theory. PM emphasizes relations as a fundamental concept, whereas in current mathematical practice it is functions rather than relations that are treated as more fundamental, for example, category theory emphasizes morphisms or functions rather than relations, however, there is an analog of categories called allegories that models relations rather than functions, and is quite similar to the type system of PM. In PM, cardinals are defined as classes of similar classes, whereas in ZFC cardinals are special ordinals. In PM there is a different collection of cardinals for each type with some complicated machinery for moving cardinals between types, whereas in ZFC there is only one sort of cardinal. Since PM does not have any equivalent of the axiom of replacement, it is unable to prove the existence of cardinals greater than omega. In PM ordinals are treated as equivalence classes of well-ordered sets, and as with cardinals there is a different collection of ordinals for each type. In ZFC there is only one collection of ordinals, usually defined as von Neumann ordinals. One strange quirk of PM is that they do not have an ordinal corresponding to one, which causes numerous unnecessary complications in their theorems. The definition of ordinal exponentiation ab in PM is not equivalent to the usual definition in ZFC and has some rather undesirable properties, for example, it is not continuous in beta and is not well ordered so is not even an ordinal. The constructions of the integers, rationals and real numbers in ZFC have been streamlined considerably over time since the constructions in PM. Topic. Differences between additions Apart from corrections of misprints, the main text of PM is unchanged between the first and second editions. In the second edition volumes 2 and 3 are essentially unchanged apart from a change of page numbering, but volume 1 has five new editions. 
a 54-page introduction by Russell describing the changes they would have made had they had more time and energy. The main change he suggests is the removal of the controversial axiom of reducibility, though he admits that he knows no satisfactory substitute for it. He also seems more favorable to the idea that a function should be determined by its values as is usual in current mathematical practice. Appendix A, numbered as asterisk 8, 15 pages about the Scheffer stroke. Appendix B, numbered as asterisk 89, discussing induction without the axiom of reducibility. Appendix C, 8 pages discussing propositional functions. An eight-page list of definitions at the end, giving a much-needed index to the 500 or so notations used. In 1962, Cambridge University Press published a shortened paperback edition containing parts of the second edition of Volume One, the New Introduction, the main text up to asterisk 56, and appendices A and C. Topic. See also. Axiomatic set theory Begriffschrift Boolean algebra logic Information processing language – first computational demonstration of theorems in PM Footnotes <laughs>